The video you're about to watch is one of the lessons that I'm creating on kbtrainings.com forward slash CCNA. These lessons are for the course of Cisco CCNA 200 301, where I go from zero to engineer and I'll help you prepare this exam of the Cisco CCNA 200 301, which is a big exam that can help you start or boost your career in the IT. So if you like this lesson, you can go on kbtrainings.com forward slash CCNA to get the full course. Thank you and enjoy the lesson. Hey, what's up guys? This is Guy here with KB Trainings. Welcome to this chapter number 4.2. This is a new chapter in our course on the CCNA 200-301 and we are going to talk about the wireless LAN deployment. In the first lesson of this chapter, we are going to cover the different Cisco wireless architectures and this is the lesson number 4.2.1. If we go back to the Cisco exam blueprint, you can see that under uh, the point 2.6, Cisco is asking us to compare the different Cisco wireless architectures as well as the different AP modes. So in this lesson, we're going to cover the wireless um, architectures. And in the next lesson, the 4.2.2, we're going to cover the AP modes. All right, so to start, we need to define what is a wireless architecture. Uh, this is what we're going to cover today, by the way. So first, we're going to see what is a wireless architecture. And then I'm going to tell you the three main wireless architecture that Cisco is promoting. The first one is the autonomous AP architecture. The second one is the cloud-based AP architecture. And the third one is the split MAC architecture. We're also going to cover the different deployment or different models of deployment of the WSC, which is the wireless LAN controller that we've seen in the first chapter we covered it but we're going to go a little further where i'm going to show you what are the different ways you can deploy the wac in your wireless network all right so first of all what is the wireless architecture this is just a way you deploy your wireless network this is the layout of your wireless network and you're also going to list all the different components that you need for your wireless network that's part of the architecture itself so we have three different architectures that we're going to cover in this course the first one is the autonomous ap architecture this is where you have ap's that are standalone they don't depend on any other device they don't rely on any other thing but themselves and they are connected to your switch or your wired network the second architecture is the cloud-based ap architecture as the name says in this kind of architectures the ap's rely on the cloud on some resources that are in the cloud to run and a good example of this is cisco meraki we're going to talk a little bit about meraki in this uh, lesson the third and last architecture is a split mac architecture this is where some of the functions of uh, or inside your wireless network are um, on the ap which is actually lightweight we call it a lightweight access point so some of the functions of your wireless network are provided by the lightweight access point some other ones are provided by the wlc or the wireless lan controller so we have a wireless lan controller in this network to be able to function correctly so to start first of all we are talking about the autonomous ap architecture as the name says the ap's are autonomous if you have a home network, this is basically what you have in your home network. I mean, most of your, most of the home networks uh, have autonomous APs. So you don't need any wireless LAN controller. You don't need any kind of software or service outside of your APs to be able to run your wireless network. An example of this is the design that I have here in Packet Tracer. In here, we can see that it's just a regular um, LAN design. We have internet coming in here. We have a firewall and then we have different switches at the distribution level and then we have the access switches right here i know we haven't talked about the network architecture design because i want you to be familiar with all the components and then we're going to talk about the architecture itself so i don't like to put that section at the beginning of the course so these are the uh, the access switches and we have this access point wireless access point um, wireless access point one wireless access point two and three that are connected to our network these access points are autonomous they don't depend on each other each of them is autonomous so if you want to configure this access point you need to come in to the access point using of course the ip address of the access point 
and you have access to usually you have access to two things the first thing is the GUI the graphic user interface where you can configure graphically your device by selecting options and uh, selecting configurations in the GUI through your browser or you have access to the CLI or command line interface which is another interface of management for your device and this is where you only have command lines you only have commands to type to configure your access point as i said each access point is autonomous so if you have two ssids to send uh through these ap's you need to make sure that you configure those two ssids on each of these ap's you need to make sure that you are configuring all the channels and everything in the appropriate way on these APs. And the drawback of that is that you have to do it on every single APs. Let's say you have one or two APs. That's fine. You can manage that. But if you have 30 APs in your campus, that's not going to work because you will have a hard time trying to match the configurations between those different APs. So you will go on each and every one of those APs to uh, set up your configuration and that's not uh, what you want to do as an engineer so that's one of the drawbacks of this kind of uh, architecture and also if you have like more than one ssid if you have let's say two ssid the first one is ssid one the second one is ssid two that means that you have two networks that you want your client to connect to depending on what hs um, depending on what ssids they're connected to so in this case here, it means that we might have two VLANs in this network. We have the VLAN 1 for the SSID 1 and the VLAN 2 for the SSID 2. So you need to make sure that the link between the switch and your wireless access point is a trunk so that all the VLANs can go through that same link. That's something that you need to, uh, to make sure you have in your network. So all these links must be trunk so that's basically what an autonomous ap architecture is so if you go back here as i said um they are configured independently so they don't depend on each other the data goes directly from the ap to the wired network so in this case the wireless access point is like an extension of your wired network or of your switched network so the ap becomes part of your network it's just broadcasting everything wirelessly in the air all the decisions are made at the ap level of course because there is no other device involved in this uh, wireless architecture and this is what i was talking about uh when i was talking about a trunk and the different vlans that you can have if you have multiple ssids and of course we have the drawbacks and uh yeah the main one is that you have to implement uh, your configuration you have to push or insert your configuration in every single AP, which might be uh, very hard if you have a lot of APs. So you can scale very well. But you can still use some other uh, resources out there from Cisco, like the Cisco Prime Infrastructure or the Cisco DNS Center to be able to manage your autonomous APs. So that's all for the autonomous AP architecture. So we're going now to talk about the cloud-based AP architecture. This is actually uh, resolving some of the issues of the autonomous APs. Here you have a centralized management software, but this software is not on site with you. This is in the cloud. That's where that's why we call it cloud-based AP architecture. And a good example of this is Cisco Meraki. I've had a chance to work a lot on Cisco Meraki um, on my previous job. It's very easy and very simple. You just create an account with Meraki. Of course, you buy Meraki devices. You buy licenses that you need. And when you deploy your network, all your configurations are already saved somewhere in the cloud on the Meraki dashboard. All you have to do is connect your AP to the network, give it access to the internet, and the AP itself will connect to the server, will grab the configuration, will pull it, and will start using it. And you can have thousands of APs working that way, pulling configurations from the cloud, which makes it very simple. So I can show that to you in this example here. This is my way of trying to mimic uh, Meraki architecture. So you have here Meraki access points. In Packet Tracer, I couldn't find um, any access point from Meraki like the MRs. Here I found the MX65W. For people that know Meraki, they know that the MX65 is the firewall, but the W stands for wireless. So this is the firewall that has wireless integrated. So let's just remove the MX65 part here and let's consider these as a wireless access points only. So these APs 
of course we have the Meraki dashboard somewhere in the cloud you have an account there and each Meraki device has a serial number so you're going to come in your account and you are going to adapt these different devices you're going to link them to your account saying that my account owns this serial number this serial number and this other serial number and you can also create your config here you create your config and you attach the config to the ap i also like um the model or the the, the template based uh, configuration so you have different templates that you can use you can try you can get the same template apply it to many devices or apply it to many sites so that they can be identical so when we have the configuration here all we have to do is connect the meraki ap to the network as soon as the meraki ap has access to the internet it's going to connect to the dashboard depending on the serial number it's going to grab the right configuration and pull it and load it on a device that's it you can use your device with the configurations that you pulled from the cloud this is cisco meraki and the cisco dashboard actually looked like this uh this is a, a screenshot of a cisco meraki dashboard i found it on meraki.com you can actually go there if you want to have a memo or a demo of uh, the dashboard you create an account and uh, for free you can have access to a demo so you have like switches wireless they also have phones cameras and everything here you can list you know the different um clients on your network and all kind of information it's a beautiful dashboard very powerful dashboard from which you can do everything some other time you have i had to drop to troubleshoot things where things go wrong and then the device maybe pulled some wrong configuration or things like that then you need a technician on site to be able to reset the device to the device with restart everything from scratch with a good configuration um, that's all for the cloud based uh, the cloud based configuration cisco meraki is a good example of that so we're going to talk now about the third architecture which is called split mac architecture if you remember in the last few lessons we mentioned the wireless lan controller this is a device that is going to, of course, as the name say, control your wireless LAN. It's going to push the configurations to the devices. It's also going to play some big role in your wireless LAN controller because some of the main functions are on this device here. I mentioned it because the third architecture that we're going to talk about here have what is called the lightweight access points. These are just access points, but they are not autonomous. They are fully dependent on the wireless LAN controller because some of the functions of this wireless network are residing on this AP, some other ones on the wireless LAN controller. That's why the AP is called lightweight access point because they are lightweight. They don't have a lot of functions. They don't have a lot of memories. They are just doing some of the work and the WLC is doing the other portion of the work. And we use protocol like CAPWAP to create tunnel between the, um, the the lightweight access point and the wireless LAN controller. And you can see that we have a wireless LAN controller. We also have a lightweight access point here. We have three of them. The access LAN, I mean, the wireless LAN controller is connected to the same network as these other devices. Actually, I should have put it here to this, uh, on this distribution switch, but that's fine. You can put it anywhere as long as they have layer two connectivity. Okay, so here, these lightweight access points are going to create a tunnel going to the wireless LAN controller so that they can pull the configuration. They can also send data when it's needed. Sometimes they can send data directly from the device to another device in the same network. Sometimes they have to send that data back to the wireless LAN controller for some security reasons, for routing reasons, and for many other reasons. So that's why it's called split MAC architecture because the functions are split between the lightweight access point and the wireless LAN controller. And what are those functions? I put in this slide, the next slide, I'm going to talk about some of these functions mm -hmm. and tell you exactly where they belong. So the functions that are provided by the lightweight access points are functions like frame exchange handshake between a client and an AP, of course, because it's the AP that is the first device connected directly to the client. So the handshake is going to happen between the AP and the client. The transmission of, of beacon frames. Beacon frames are those frames that are sent out for uh, information. They are sent out periodically so that the AP is going to broadcast uh, the, the network it has, broadcast the SSIDs, and let everyone know 
everyone in the wireless sphere know that I'm here. These are my networks. This is how you can connect to me and all of that. So beacons are sent by the AP. Of course, you can also monitor your radio channels for noises, interference, and other W lanes. So your AP will be, of course, on site. It will be listening to other channels, listening to interference to see if there is any conflict in your network. And the encryption and decryption is also done at this level, at the AP level. You also monitor the presence of other APs. Uh, this, there is a notion of rogue AP that we're going to talk about when we will mention security here. Uh, this is where there is an access point that doesn't belong to your organization, but it was placed in your um, location for some malicious reasons. So someone put it there and it's going to mimic your SSIDs. So people that think they connect to your network, they actually connect to the rogue APs. This is some type of man in the middle attack. We're going to talk about it in the security portion of this lesson. So these other functions here are some of the functions that are provided by the wireless LAN controller. We have the authentication. When you have to authenticate your devices, we have to authenticate your users. It's done at the WLC level. Association and reassociation is also done at the uh, WSC level. You also have frame translation and bridging. When the frames are coming in, they are from the wireless network. They need to be translated into Ethernet, into something that can be read by your uh, your wired network. So it's done at the uh, WSC level. You also have all these security functions like uh, edo 2.1x, EAP, radius, and so on. This is done at the WLC level. That's why it's called split MAC because the functions are split between the WLC and the lightweight access point. And I also have this um, image here from the Cisco documentation. And of course, everything that I say here, I provide a link to the Cisco documentation where you can go and read more about this. This is one of the images that I got from the Cisco documentation. It clearly shows us um, a lightweight access point over here and a wireless LAN controller. And you can see that we have tunnels. We have cap up tunnels between the access point and the WLC. One of the tunnels is used for control. The other one is used for data. And they are using UDP with a certain port number that I don't bother mentioning here because you don't need to, to know that. We are still at the CCNA level for wireless, so it's just good to know. And these are the different functions that I mentioned uh, for the, the access point and for the controller. And next, we are going to see the different deployment models of your wireless LAN controller. So let's go back to the design. All right, so first of all, depending on what you read, you are also going to see two different types of deployment of the WLC. People will talk about the centralized deployment and the distributed deployment. Distributed. So the centralized one is where you have a single WLC in a centralized location in your network. So all the APs or lightweight APs are connected to that wireless LAN controller. And distributed is just where the WLC is distributed. So it's in many locations inside your network. But we are not going to do that. I'm going to stick uh, solely to what I read on the Cisco documentation. So this is where we talk about these different um, types of deployments of the WLC. First of all, we have the unified deployment. This is where the WLC, just like in this image, is in some centralized location where it's doing all the work. And as I said, I should have put it here where we have the distribution switches that are much more powerful. So we have the WLC here and all the tunnels are created going to the WLC with CapWAP. So the unified deployment is mostly used in large enterprises. It can support up to 6,000 APs and 64,000 clients on your network. So the second deployment that we have here is the cloud deployment. This is just when the wireless LAN controller doesn't reside in the same network it's actually somewhere on the internet so yeah same thing but the wsc is outside of uh, your site it's not on premise it's actually on azure or aws and so on so you don't have it on site so this deployment is a little less powerful than the unified deployment you can support up to 3000 aps and 32000 clients so the next one is the embedded infrastructure or embedded deployment of the wireless LAN controller. This is where the wireless LAN controller 
is actually embedded in some of your devices. It might be on a router or a switch or on different switches. So you may have switches in your network also playing the role of wireless LAN controller. This is the embedded uh, infrastructure. And for this infrastructure, we can have up to 2000, oh, 200 APs and 4,000 clients. The last model that we have is the Mobility Express. This is actually the, like the quickest implementation of Cisco. This is where you have your WLC that is co-located with an AP in a certain location in the network. So one of those APs will have a while, uh, WLC embedded or WLC uh, service running on that single AP. And of course, it's going to manage all the different uh, uh, lightweight APs that you have in a network. There are also some APs that are just strong enough to also play the role of wireless LAN controller inside your network. And that is what Cisco calls uh, Mobility Express. All right, guys, that's it for this lesson. And if you have any question, don't forget to uh, ask in the forum or send me an email. I'll be glad to respond. And if you want to read more on this, go in the links that I'm going to leave on this lesson. You're going to read more from Cisco. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching this. I'll see you in the next lesson. Take care and bye.